Hello viewers, how are you doing? This is Super GT and we are back in Forza 6 for stock car challenge number 10 or something. And we are driving the Lexus LFA. Loads of people recommended this car and it's Sebring and it's carnage. Well, look at that. BMW into the back of everyone causes a 12 car pileup. We make contact with the Porsche. He goes a little bit wide. I don't know what kind of line he was trying to take there though. A couple of monos ahead and a couple of people into the tyre wall and I think we've just got a mono on our tail there. So we're just going to follow these two guys around here, not going to go for a move. So the Lexus LFA is in A-Class, 687 rated, so it's not actually too far from the top of A-Class. So I'm not giving away too much. But we are going to find out how good the brakes are as we go into the hairpin. Two monos on our tail and we've gone a little bit deep, but we're going to make it. Well, not if that guy comes across, and we're going to be forced over the grass, and we are surrounded by monos, and, well, they've just taken each other off, and that's two positions free. I'm into sixth place, as per usual, so we're going to follow this guy through in the other mono, the sensible one of the three who can actually drive without ramming off the opposition. So coming through the left-hander, this one's a, a very tricky corner to get right. And we're through there actually quite nicely. But then progressing to lap 3, not much else happened. But we did get past this 4 GT. And then back at the same corner, we're going to go on the brakes. But the guy behind me is not going to brake. He's into the back of me. And I'm into the tyre wall. But I've actually gained a position out of all of that. And um, into 4th. So that 4 GT having a pretty awful middle sector there. Moving to Catalonia, the short circuit. Now, we always know this is probably actually one of the worst tracks for first corners. There's already someone off before we get to the first corner. So I'm just going to stick to the inside, brake nice and early. And there we go. There's uh, pretty much 90% of the population off into the gravel. And through we come in fifth position. And this guy's just going to go for a mega lunge over the grass. And I'm going to give him space, but not on the exit. We just had a little bit of a tangling together there, I guess. But then he did get ahead. I got smashed again. So, you know, as I tried to rejoin, maybe I should have looked behind. But I did only rejoin to the very side of the track. Into the chicane at the end of the lap. He's going to uh, kick off here. As the Alpha goes wide, very narrow, gets hit by this guy. The Ferrari comes back on, makes contact with me again and again. And I'm trying to correct myself and I just can't. He makes contact with me again. I'm spinning round and, well, that's just laughable. We've both lost about 10 years of our life there, just trying to correct ourselves. I did catch back up with him very quickly. Halfway through lap two, he just goes way too uh, slow into the chicane, gets sideways. And I'm around the outside. The Lexus LFA has got decent power, so I can easily get past him if he goes too slowly through that chicane. Into this one, I was expecting a big ram. But it didn't come, he wasn't too pissed off at me, surprisingly. And we moved to the end of lap three. The chicane, once again, there's someone off on the left-hand side there. The Alpha is gonna try and take out the Aston Zagato here, but I'm through, gaining three positions in about three seconds, up into eighth place. Still not the best race at all, though. I should be doing a lot better. And if you look on the map, there was quite a big group of cars. Into the first corner, I just commit the cardinal sin of breaking too late into that first corner. And I'm off. I'm going to lose one position. Some guy went flying off to the side there on my right-hand side. I don't know if you quite saw that. But we are through in ninth. We've only lost one position, thankfully, given how big that group was. The Zagato is slow up the hill. So we're going to go for the move. Cleanly done. I'm expecting a cut back. I can see his arrow move over to the right-hand side. But he doesn't quite go for it. So I'm stuck in eighth place through the chicane. And we are going to approach the hairpin. And this is where I always expect to get rammed from behind and that sounds so rude but uh, thankfully he doesn't oblige that time so I am safe and coming through in the end to finish eighth so you know not the best race at all so we're going to move to the next one Indianapolis four laps 12 of us in this race and I'm in 10th off the line straight into ninth we have an alpha on our side on the left hand side here as we approach the start. Oh, actually no, he's just completely disappeared. I guess that pretty much confirms Illuminati, but just let me know your thoughts on that. So into the first corner, 
This guy in the S2000, Cookie Monster. Again, a bit aggressive. But, you know, I'm going to let that one slide for now. So we've got an Aston Martin on our inside. I'm going to try and go around his outside. He didn't uh, quite know where he was going, I didn't think. But I'm going to do a, a nice switch back on him. We're going to grind together as we're going to swing to the left and then the right as we go onto the middle straight. The S2000 who rammed us in the first quarter is just going to come across. That looked pretty aggressive. I'm going to look behind. He's going to uh, ram into the Aston Martin. That is absolutely filthy. Coming into this one, I think the Aston retaliated, smashed the S2000, and I have become the victim of their absolute trolling of, of each other. Uh, so not good stuff. I'm just going to make my thoughts known to this guy. He needs to sort his shit out, stop ramming everyone off. And then he actually gets back past me here through into the second to last corner. Now the last corner of the track onto the main straight. Up the main straight. I'm just holding off the throttle because I just think he's going to come across a pit manoeuvre me. And thankfully the Aston Martin actually comes to my rescue here. So going into the first corner, I see that proximity arrow come across. A big collision sound. And those two have just sorted each other out. And then at the end of the race, well, this happens. We'll leave that there, um, so yeah, you're not actually going to find out what happens, but it's, well, it's kind of obvious. Moving to this one, Prague, make contact with the Porsche, not too much happening there, but he goes really slow on the inside with the Ferrari, so I'm going to go around their outside, into fifth. The Mono makes contact with the guy ahead, but looking behind, there was a massive gap there, so I'm guessing they all just got caught in a collision. Through here, the GT miscalculates that massively, he's into the Mono. But I'm through just about, just making contact with the 4GT on the way through. But I'm through into third, so this is a very good opportunity to try and get a good result. Fourth place is quite a long way away, already about 700 or 800 feet behind. So this is a good opportunity to try and maximise my gap here. And I could definitely get a podium if I drive well here. Only giving away 13 PI overall, so not too much of a difference. So stock car challenge number 10 maybe the least PI difference compared to all of the ones I've done. I think the biggest one I've done is the Honda NSX 92 or the 05 one where I was giving away about 80 or 90 PI and I still actually managed to get on the podium in that race or in that video. But coming through, we're going to go uphill, back down again and then towards the left. This is Prague uh, Reverse, one of the showcase tracks of, or the showcase track of Forza 5. Coming back uphill, we've got a catering just ahead of us. Didn't look too quick. I'm going to move over to the left-hand side, as you would if I right-hander on the entry. He's gone in way too narrow, and I'm going to get the better line on the exit, and I'm through into second. Kosu in the lead is about 900 feet away, so it doesn't look like I'm going to be able to catch up with him. But that is going to be a decent second for now, as long as I try to keep it on the track. As I do, in the end, finishing third. Not a bad result. And there are the results if you want to have a look. A Mercury Cougar winning that one, so well done to him. Now this race, I didn't quite manage to record the whole thing. For some reason, my Elgato didn't want to capture the first half of the race. So this is lap three of four. I find myself in, well, you know, sixth place as per usual. And I've got this guy in the Ferrari right behind me. Into the carousel, the middle corner of the track, the long left. He's going to go through on the inside. I did go a little bit wide. But he doesn't quite have the straight line speed. So coming down this straight into the hairpin, I'm going to have the inside line. I'm just going to make sure I don't break too late. Get into the apex very nicely. Block the inside so you can't go for a cut back. It's this very long hairpin, the 270 degrees. It seems to go on forever. And we are through, uh, still in sixth place. Managed to block him off quite nicely. And you see through this chicane area here. The car handles very nicely. It does feel very heavy though, this car. So you do have to turn in quite a lot earlier than you think. Also, the brakes aren't ideally um, good. They're not amazing. So you do have to be very wary on the brakes. Just concentrate about 70% uh, of throttle pressure when you are on the brakes. That's without ABS. Of course, if you uh, are racing with ABS, just mash down the throttle uh, the brake pedal 100% and you'll get the best possible performance from the brakes if you're on ABS off. 70% or 80% is about what you need. So the last lap of four, coming through the carousel again, haven't quite made the same mistake, but he is going to get a better drive. But then you can see here the difference between our power uh, ratings as I drive away up the straight. 
into the apex again very nicely. He can't go for another cut back there because I'm blocking the inside quite well. And then through into this chicane section. I, I do like this uh, left right flowing section. Dip your wheels into that cut through. Into the left, into the right. Yeah, I do cut that a little bit. And then down the hill into the chicane. Like I say about braking, you have to focus. And I didn't. And then I'm just into the wall. That is just an awful bit of driving. I've lost the place after all that hard work. I've lost my favourite position and now in 7th, so finishing there in the end. So overall, not too bad of a car, but it does feel a little bit too heavy and perhaps a little bit of tuning is required. Maybe it would be a lot better in S class where you can uh, put a lot of upgrades into it. With only 13 PI to play with, it probably wouldn't be amazing in A class, it probably will be drivable. Better than what I did there. But that is going to bring a close to Stock Ice Challenge number 10. So please do suggest more cars for me to drive in stock form in Forza 6 online to see if, how many people I can beat, basically. So that's it for me. Thank you very much for watching. Subscribe for more of the same. Hit the like button if you did like the video. And I shall see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.